Good morning, and welcome to NBUC's live, well, not so live, pre-show this morning. So here's a question for you, Dwayne. What is a favorite Christmas memory of yours from around the church? Around here, uh, I think it really is the whole idea of, of caring and sharing. Oh, darn it. You took mine. Okay. No. <laughs> That's so okay. Then, no, 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 no. I'll change no, it because no. I've mine got is, Mine is different. Okay. Mine is the same but All different. All right. <laughs> it is the whole idea of caring and sharing and uh, feeling the excitement of, of people uh, receiving these huge boxes. And this year is going to be a little bit different, but it's still the same principle. And I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled about it. I was here the year of the turkey when uh, we would pull frozen turkeys out of the back of a, mm. of a half ton truck yes. uh, when people were leaving and just say, here you go. Um, anyway, that was, I, I just, I just love that. Yeah. Yeah. The caring and sharing is a really special um, part for me as well. Um, the one that I'm particularly thinking of is we do an annual Christmas party, or we used to pre-COVID, um, for for just some really close, longtime friends, and um, we decided that we were going to sponsor a family through caring and sharing, um, and just let everybody else know that was attending the party. We were, we just threw it out there and said, hey, we're sponsoring a family for our church's, um, you know, caring and sharing outreach kind of program for Christmas. And we would love it if you would like to join in. This is what you can do. And so we uh, actually kind of posted all of the, the gifts that had been requested. Um, and everybody pretty much i think there was only a couple that that weren't able to to jump in and and join in with that and it was so exciting to just not only us to be able to do something for a family in need but to be able to bring our friends into the process that none of them you know go to church none of them are involved in in a church kind of uh, setting that we are, they don't have a community like we do, and yet they jumped in to, to help in yeah. ours. So that was really exciting for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for everybody else, uh, welcome to this uh, Advent season. Uh, so grab uh, a coffee, eggnog, tea, gingerbread, whatever it happens to be, and get ready to worship. Thank you for worshiping with us. You can find us on Facebook at MBUC Young Families and on Instagram at MBUC Kids. 10 a.m. on Sundays, you can join our family praise parties. And on Fridays for preschool, we have Faith Fridays at 10 a.m. I hope to see you there.
Merry Christmas, Christmas from North, North Family's family. family. Merry Christmas. Welcome to worship at NBUC. Merry Christmas. Hi, my name is Debbie Johnson. I served on staff at North Bramalee for over 11 years and then retired so that I could focus on family. In 2020, I became known as a voluntary associate minister, which simply means that I help out where I can. Hope is the theme for this very first week of Advent, and I'm sure that you've heard by now that Advent means coming. And as the church moves through this Advent season, the four weeks leading up to Christmas, it's marked by this expectant waiting. Hope is not passive. In fact, if anything, it is the embodiment of expectant waiting. I've been thinking about hope a lot recently. I've been wondering, what is giving you hope during these times? What is sustaining your hope for the long haul? I've come to think of hope as that space that is between the reality of what is and the dream or vision of what can be, not only in terms of our personal hopes and dreams, but in terms of God's hope and dream for us that Jesus talked about, the kingdom of heaven come on earth, a time where we would beat our swords into plowshares, the lion would lie down with the lamb, where we as humanity, as communities of people, would find ourselves being able to live in loving and just relationship with God and with one another. It's hard to hold on to that hope sometimes, to believe that that kind of change, that kind of transformation from the reality of what is to the dream of what can be, can be sustained for the long haul. Can we human beings change that much? I still have hope that we can. And that's one of the reasons why in every Advent I turn to the story of Anna and Simeon that is found in Luke chapter 2. Anna and Simeon were an older couple. They weren't married or, or together, but they both went to the temple every day and waited the whole of their lives to see the Messiah come. A Messiah that would free Israel from the bondage of Roman oppression. The Messiah who promised, who ushered in that kingdom of heaven, that kingdom of heaven come on earth. Anna was probably well over a hundred years old by the time that Mary and Joseph brought the baby Jesus to the temple shortly after his birth. For over 84 years, she had come to the temple every single day, praying, seeking, searching, praying some more, some days being so frustratingly impatient and other days in a deep peace as she prayed and waited and looked for that Messiah, for that dream and vision of God to be ushered in. And even though she wasn't able to see what would happen after Jesus' birth and his life and his death, she had the hope had that would sustain her for that vision to become a reality. She had seen a glimpse and that had given her hope of what God could do. So one of the things that I do in Advent to replenish my own hope, which at times can sink very low, is that I reread that story of Anna and Simeon and realize that God is in this for the long haul. And so maybe I can be since God is in the midst. And then I remember that line from the first chapter of John that says that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot put it out. And so I light a lot of candles to remind me of that hope, that hope isn't passive. And that as I'm waiting for that change to come with expectant hope, that I can also take steps each and every day to make help make that dream a reality, to pray, to listen, to light candles, and to not give up that God is in the midst of it all. A blessing of Advent, friends. Goodbye. And welcome back, or just welcome, if you're just jumping in and joining us uh, to NBUC Church Online. I'm Rebecca. 
I'm Dwayne. And we are so glad that you're joining us this morning to uh, worship with us this Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent. And we are so excited to be able to sit in front of a Christmas tree <laughs> with Christmas decorations. <laughs> Our house is full of Christmas decorations boxed all over the place right now. Um, but it's such an exciting time to, to, to join us. So thank you for, for joining us today. Yeah, and we get today to start off our Advent series, our Good News Advent series. So we're really excited about it. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, uh, hope, uh, which we're really excited about because we all can use a little more hope. Um, and then as we go throughout the rest of Advent, uh, peace, joy, and ending on love. So uh, it's going to be a great series. And, you know, as Jamie always says, it's going to be the best series ever. ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we want to just encourage you to invite your friends to connect with us today. We've got Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, our website, Church Online. Just, uh, yeah, encourage your friends to join us today and just get connected in. And now we're going to turn to our worship team. We've got an amazing uh, Christmas anthem almost that we are uh, you're going to be seeing over the next few weeks and it's called Here Comes Heaven and just kind of bringing us into the whole concept of you know what Christmas means for us as Christians the the joy and the hope that Christmas brings us and I love the first few lines of the song um, but I'm going to talk about that afterwards, after you've listened to it. And, but just pay attention to those, to those words because they are so meaningful and they are so apropos for right now. So just if you want to stand up, sit down, turn up the, the music volume um, and get yourselves and your hearts prepared for some worship now. So over to you, worship team. Love is broken. 
of salvation Darkness reigns no more For Jesus is greater He is greater Angels, let your song begin Here comes heaven Christ Thanks, worship team. What did I tell you? Isn't that a great song? And so apropos for this time of year as we're thinking about Christmas. I just love those words. Children, weep no more. Hope is on the horizon. Weary world, behold your promised Messiah. It is so encouraging for us to remember that Jesus is our Messiah. He is our Savior, and He has come to rescue us from the hopelessness of this world and COVID and everything else that's going on right now. So what an encouraging word for us as we um, start to settle in, out of worship and into the rest of the, the service. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we also get to switch gears back and forth between uh, things that are very um, uh, personal um, and special, uh, but also things that are a little more fun. And later today, uh, we're going to be releasing on all of our social media platforms a recipe um, that you can uh, gather your family next Sunday, have everybody together, and be cooking along with Jamie. Uh, we are going to have some fun with that next week. He's going to be in the kitchen cooking away. He's going to have a special guest with him and you're, you're going to want to see uh, what he gets up to and how he prepares um, all of it. And so uh, uh, it'll be just a fun night together. So I want to invite you to that and also put on your radar uh, our Christmas Eve services. We're going to have three different Christmas Eve services to choose from. We're going to have a children's uh, Christmas Eve service and, and then two others. We're going to be ending the day um, with a live communion. And so just be prepared, be ready to enter in. Um, it's a great opportunity. Uh, watch one, two, or even all three and watch them there together as a family. So uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it anyway. Yeah, for sure. And also, as mentioned last week, we have the daily Advent devotional stories that are starting uh, tomorrow. And so you're going to want to check out all of our social media um, and track with that. Uh, it's also going to be sent out by email, so that's that's exciting for those who who aren't on the you know Instagram, Facebook, YouTube uh, scene. Um, and then we have the guided meditation that Debbie is leading. Uh, I think Mary is helping her as well, and that's going to be tomorrow night at 8 p.m. So if you are interested in joining in with that, please sign up on the uh, website and uh, jump in. I know that uh, the last time it went really well, there was so many, quite a few people jumped in uh, for it. And uh, it's, it's really uh, helpful to know how to do a guided meditation yeah. and um, get yourself centered in prayer. Yeah, uh, we really love the idea about the... Um, these different stories uh, that people have and and uh, they're all going to be sent out on social media. I'm really excited about that because I th really think, especially now, we need a daily reminder of all that God has done, mm. uh, which leads us perfectly into um, our next song called Do It Again, where we have an opportunity to remember 
that God's uh, faithfulness lasts each and every day. Take it away, guys.
Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Your promise still stands. Thank you, worship team, for that beautiful song, Do It Again. I really love that song. Um, it's such a great reminder of, of God's faithfulness. So let's just uh, have a word of prayer just before we uh, get into the offering, shall we? Father God, thank you so much, Lord, for that faithfulness that we have just heard and sung about. You have never failed us. And you are always there with us, and we thank you so much for that. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the hope that you bring at all times, but especially we are reminded of it at Christmas time and, and the beginning of Advent. And Lord, I just lift up the offerings that are coming in today. I pray that you will bless each and every one that um, puts an offering in however they are doing that, Lord, and just bless them abundantly at this time so that we can just minister to your people even more and through the community. In your holy name, Jesus, amen. We're now gonna turn it over to Jamie and Katrina. Take it away, guys. Hi, everyone. As part of our Reimagine campaign, we wanna take some time this morning to celebrate some of the amazing ways that we've seen God at work over the last several months through this pandemic. So enjoy, enjoy this video that you're about to see. Shut down, locked down, left alone, economy stretched, relationships pressed. Suddenly we're wondering what really matters. Put a mask on, wash those hands, feeling powerless, but doing what we can reaching out, coming together, or asking life's big questions, and trying to remember where my hope comes from. We are called to choose faith and not fear. We are to fear nothing, because you have an unshakable king, an unshakable kingdom. The church is stepping out for a time such as this. You're making such a difference. We couldn't be doing all the things that we're doing now if it wasn't for you. We've been engaging more people across Canada than ever before. Our online offering is better established, and over the last number of months, we host regular Zoom update meetings so our people know what is happening around the church. Sharing the gospel and impacting our communities in new, innovative ways. Alpha, Alpha Marriage, Alpha Youth has been offered online regularly now. We have close to 100 people praying for an hour a week through our 24-7 prayer initiative. Our Thanksgiving food drive and back-to-school program have reached 150 people. Many are being reached virtually through our online worship videos. And we plan to reach more as a recording studio is being constructed in the church building. No one is too small. No one is infinite. We saw our first COVID wedding and four baptisms. We are reaching the lost, the broken, the marginalized, opening up the doors to the journey thrift to better serve our community. Meeting practical needs with guided meditation to support mental wellness. Extending a warm a welcome and a message of hope through the Good News podcast. Bringing church connections to living rooms through the launch of Zoom Church, daily Facebook Lives, morning and evening devotionals. Investing in a rising generation. Planning alongside them 
a packed series of events and experience for Christmas than we have ever done before. Taking kids, youth, students to connect together, though physically apart, through kids' ministry, affinity groups, and Alpha Youth. Reorganizing our church structure and proclaiming life into the web, making it even easier to join the fun. We are a family on a mission. We will not hold back the hope we have in Christ. With all of us working together, we are playing our part. The sharing of the gospel, the revitalization of the church, the transformation of our community. Thank you. This could not have been possible without you. You're serving. You're giving your prayers and bringing hope to the world. We are indeed building a better Brampton and beyond. The church is alive. Let hope arise. Isn't it amazing how God can work in the midst of so many different situations? Today we are talking about our campaign and why are we doing that? Well, we believe that even in the midst of COVID-19, or maybe especially in the midst of COVID-19, it is so important to still grow our relationship with God. And we believe that giving is one of those ways that we can grow close and grow closer in our relationship with God. As well, it's a time when we hope that you would be excited to give to the mission and ministry of North Bramley in this time and all the things that we are trying to do. So it's at times like these where it's uh, helpful for us to uh, consider some of the biblical principles around on giving and just want to offer three of those uh, today. The first is that God owns everything. Everything we have comes from God. The second is that we're invited to give off the top or what the Bible calls first fruits. And then the third is to give with joy. Give with joy to a cause that we really believe in. Our hope, our prayer is that as God leads us to give, and believe me, no pressure at all on these things, especially now, uh, especially during COVID. We understand people are at very different places and that's okay. But as we're able and as God leads us to be able to do these things, to give with great joy is our hope and our prayer out of this time. We are excited to be able to give to this and move things forward with God. And so are other people. I want to share uh, a quote from Caitlin Nugent, who talks about North Bramley. Why are you excited to give to the mission and ministry at North Bramley? And she says, I just love this community and the fact that MBUC really tries hard to practice what they preach by going out into communities and making a difference, letting God work through each of us. I'm also excited to give to the mission and ministry at MBUC because they make it so accessible to do so. I feel like I've been blessed with so many opportunities here to make a difference for God in my life, and this has overflowed into my own daily lifestyle and Toronto community. No matter how many churches I've checked out, I just can't seem to find the same sort of community that I have found here at North Bramley. Hmm. Oh, thanks, Caitlin. And I know there's others that have sent in some of their uh, expressions of excitement around, around what's happening these days, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, here's how it's going to work. And again, without question, no pressure. Uh, we know, again, some, some aren't able to give at this point in time, and, and we're praying for you if you're under financial strain. Um, please, it just, just yeah, don't, don't, don't worry if that's the situation you're in. However, some people are really excited. They've been waiting for this, and we would encourage those to step up as God leads them. And so there's two opportunities. One would be to give towards our year end so we could finish this year strong. And the second would be to make a commitment for 2021 as we live into uh, next year and all that God has for us. You can find this way to give because we don't have cards to give out in church today. It's a little different this year, but you can find the information on our website. There'll be a commitment card there that you can fill out online. Uh, we also will have this in the NBUC link so that you can have it through an email. And again, if you would like to have a, a card, a hard copy, we would be happy to get one to you. Just let us know and we'd be glad to do that. So thanks again for partnering together to be God's church, to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus, to let the Holy Spirit lead us out into this world. It's all part of what we do here and glad that we get to do it together. Let's take a moment to pray as we just entrust this time to God. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, you, you are the giver of all things. You, you have an abundance of, of resources and so we thank you for the way that you have resourced 
the mission and ministry of this church in the past and let you continue to do it today. We pray for those that are under financial strain, that you would um, be with them and free them from this conversation, absolutely. But some people, some people you've ignited in them a desire to give and prepare them for this. And we just can't wait to see what you're going to do as we do all that we can as you lead us together as a whole church. Bless it all, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm always inspired when I hear um, stories like like what Jamie and, and Katrina had talked about. Plus, I still can't believe all that we have accomplished uh, ever since COVID got started. It's absolutely mm -hmm. incredible. Um, and even today, things continue to change and evolve and grow. I'm so excited about someone like Peter, um, uh, Peter Wasonen, uh, who is now helping out with the youth affinity groups. Uh, so he and Caleb are together doing a sports group. Uh, they uh, get together with a group of like-minded people. They have a great time together. And uh, then they have a, an opportunity to listen to a, a talk all about God and his faithfulness. Uh, and I think that's what we are trying to express, the difference that God is making in people's lives. Doesn't matter if they've been here like Peter, been here for a long time. Uh, and notice, Peter, I didn't say a really, really long time, <laughs> um, but they've been impacted as a family um, significantly by all that's happened here. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet, uh, Peter is still growing in his faith and connecting with people like never, like never before. And that's exciting. Uh, and so your giving helps uh, to, to make that happen. Um, also, we are still in our uh, caring and sharing program time. We have extra donation drop-off times this Sunday from one to three, and then again next Sunday. Uh, so for those that are choosing to be participate in that, I uh, just wanted to give you that heads up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now we're going to be moving uh, to the lighting of the Advent candle, which is always such a special time. Um, we're going to have the Martin family uh, do their first do the first week of Advent, and kids, I believe that Kirsten has uh, arranged for all of the families to have their uh, Advent candle lit uh, lighting ceremony kind of thing done uh, today as well. So get all that stuff ready because now is the time for us to head into that. So Martin family, take it away. Hi Grace, mommy has a question for you, okay? Mommy wants to know, where do you see God's hope? In the stars. You see God's hope in the stars? How? In our dreams. In your dreams and anywhere else? In our heart. In your heart? You see God's hope in the stars, in your dreams, and in your heart? That's beautiful. Do you want to help Mommy light this candle? Good morning, everyone. Really, really uh, glad to be doing the message with Brian Pengali, our youth ministry lead. And if you haven't heard about our affinity groups, this new vision for our youth ministry, it's got some momentum. And so, so Brian, just so grateful for the way that you and the team is leading through that. Some amazing things are happening. So thanks so much. If we were together in church right now, everybody would be applauding. So I'm applauding that and, and praise God for that really, really awesome stuff happening. But today, we're going to kick off a series called Good News. And, and to be honest, the gospel actually means good news. It's the good news of Jesus. And we want to enter into that as we move into this December time, as we move towards Christmas. It's coming. And this is, in some ways, the beginning of our preparations for that as, as a church. The, the, the word Advent, uh, which this is the, the season of the, of the church here uh, before Christmas, really means to be waiting, anticipating, expecting and all of that is part of our preparing for the arrival of Jesus, the birth of God, and the good news that that is and that brings. I was thinking about this, this series, and I was thinking about Jane Vardy. Some of you may know Jane. Hmm. Jane showed up at the church years ago, and when she did, it was at this time of year, and she saw these four words on, on flannels at the front of the sanctuary. Again, this was some time ago. Hope, peace, joy, love. And when she saw those words, something moved within her, God moved within her. And she said to herself, 
I need more of that in my life. Hope, peace, joy, love. That's the good news that we hope to enter into and bring and celebrate together as we move into this this Advent season. And hope particularly is something that I feel like I need right now. As we're Mm. going into this Christmas season, it's going to be different from every other Christmas season. I'll be honest, when COVID happened, I was like, you know, this is going to be hard. The summer will be hard. But by the time it's Christmas time, for sure by then we'll be able to get back together. And that will make Christmas all the sweeter when we get together with our families. And now the numbers are going up and I'm not going to be able to be with my family this Christmas. And it, it just seems to make everything harder. Um, and when you're faced with those realities, look, you, you really need hope in those situations because the things that you always look to, to remind you of, of what is good Mm. are suddenly falling away. I know, uh, when the American election was going on and, uh, I was, I spent way too many nights sitting up late at night, refreshing constantly on my computer, seeing more, a couple drip, more votes coming in and, and having to remind myself that, you know, my hope of good things in the future can't just sit with this election, can't just sit with one thing. Christianity has been through the most brutal of dictators. It's been through plague and famine. It has been through wars and it has survived. And they found hope in all of those times. And so as important as this election was, and as a dual citizen, I, I, you know, was very motivated Mm -hmm. and, and interested in it. I had to remind myself that my hope can't just be in what is happening right now, Mm. that either way this comes out, my hope is going to endure. Yeah, yeah. So today we're going to be talking about hope and uh, using Isaiah, some passage from Isaiah to to enter into that. Uh, Next Sunday, Ali McGregor will be talking about peace. Uh, That's December 6th. December 13th, uh, Debbie Johnson and I will be talking about joy. And then on December 20th, Rebecca Kabiseba and Dwayne Whitty will be talking about love, all part of the good news of this Christmas story. And again, Jesus coming, the good news of, of Jesus. So as we think about hope today, man, I agree, Brian. Like I remember back when, when I thought for sure, I think we all thought by Christmas, if not the new year, things would be back to normal. And we're not there. We know that. We know that. And I just was thinking about the word hope, that we, we, we actually did a two-week series on hope at the beginning of COVID. And if you remember, there was an acronym that God gave us, I think, around that. And the H was for, for honesty, to be honest how hard it was. The O was for opportunity. Where is God going to bring opportunity? The P was for prayer, to pray without ceasing. And the E was for expectation that even now, especially now, to expect that God is going to do something even in the midst of, of this. And so when we think about, about hope today and the honesty part, like it is, it's a challenge. We understand that. It's going to be even more difficult as we enter into Christmas. And Christmas isn't what it is most of the time, usually for us. There's things that we're already disappointed about. And we get that, like we get that. But I think part of what we want to do with hope is to recognize the Stockdale paradox, which says to be equally realistic, Mm -hmm. but also equally optimistic about the future. And to hold those two up at the same time will be the very best that we can, we can do. I love James Stockdale. He, He says, you must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end, which you can never afford to lose. We want to keep that faith with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. That in some ways is hope. And the Bible certainly has a lot to say about that. And it's funny, I think it it hits different people differently. I think you have an easier time with the optimism side of that, and I have an easier time yeah. with the realistic side <laughs> of that. And sometimes yeah. we have to push on each other to, yeah. to keep each other in, in balance in this. I, and, and as I look into Christmas, I'm I'm feeling very aware that, you know, through the previous months of COVID, um, even when things got hard, the weather was nice. You could go outside and that was a big kind of escape valve. Mm. And looking into this, it's not going to be, you know, as Mm -hmm. it gets colder, I can't sit on someone's porch and chat (laughs) with them. Mm -hmm. Um, And so as I'm looking ahead to the next couple months, it's easy for me to focus on all of the things that are going to be hard 
And I need to, there's a discipline to hope where I need to mm-hmm. remind myself yeah. that, that the bad is not all that there is. Mm-hmm. And I need to tell myself, here are the things I can do. Here are the things I can appreciate and, and help myself focus on those. Even when, yeah. even as I'm honest about, Hey, this is really not great. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to point to some of those places where we can have that kind of resiliency in the midst of this and yeah. God can give that to us. That's part of living into, into hope. But let's jump into Isaiah because there's yeah. so much there in this in this work from Isaiah. Yeah. Isaiah is um, a, a book of the Bible. It's one of the ones I have to be honest that I haven't always spent as much time mm. in. And as I was preparing for this sermon, one of the things that really got me excited looking into it was um, I knew this before, but coming to grips with the reality that Isaiah was written over quite a long period of time. Mm. The, the first chapters of it were written in a time period. All of them were in very challenging time periods. So the first portion, uh, 40 chapters of so of Isaiah, was written when Israel was being attacked by Assyria, their neighbors to the north, who actually wiped out the northern kingdom of Israel, mm-hmm. attacked Judah, got all of the way to the capital, and just at the capital, kind of God miraculously saved them and things fell apart. And in that time period there was a lot of people arguing of what do we need to do? Like there's this Mm -hmm. threat, what are we going to do? And people were like, we need to change so we can do an alliance with the Egyptians and that's going to save us. Or we need to do this Mm. and we need to do that. And all through Isaiah, there's this reoccurring pattern of saying, those things aren't going to save you. Mm. God is your hope in the midst of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were pulled back on the very brink of being wiped out by a miracle of God. Mm. But, you know, a couple hundred years later, Babylonia comes along Mm. and it wipes out Assyria. And at the time, I think they were pretty excited of, ha ha, we got (laughs) rid of them. That's, you know, whoo, things are safe now. But then Babylon invaded them. And once again, they had to ask, where is our hope? And the next portion of, of Isaiah was written by people who had actually, uh, Babylon had taken them into captivity Mm. and they were in a foreign land Mm. and they had to say, is God still real and do I have something to hold on to Mm. even though the worst, the literal worst has happened? Yeah, yeah. And they still found hope in that scenario. And then hundreds of years after that, the king of Babylon was taken over by Persia (laughs) and Cyrus was put on the throne. And he said that the Israelites could go back into the Mm. land and rebuild the temple. And the last section was written in this time of rebuilding things in uncertainty. And they said, okay, well, we're in this whole new situation. Do we still have hope in this situation? Mm -hmm. And so the fortunes were going up and down. The circumstances were going up and down. But in each of these seasons, They were holding on to this larger picture of God that gave them hope, even when it was at the worst. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things I love about Isaiah, this pattern that's there, but also Isaiah keeps pointing them back to God. In fact, the prophecy of Jesus to come. And so let's let's look at Isaiah. The end of Isaiah chapter 8, we talk about being honest, being Mm -hmm. realism. So Mm -hmm. it it names, I was just going to read Isaiah 9, but we need to to look at the end of Isaiah 8 first, because... He really names how how distressed they are. He says, distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land when they are famished. They will become enraged and looking upward, will curse their king and their God. Then they will look toward the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom, and they will be thrust into utter darkness. So there is this obviously very real sense that they are living in, in pain and brokenness and something I think that many people are experiencing right now through through COVID, a darkness Can I read and a heaviness. Verses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Because this is the good news. Because then coming. it goes into yeah. chapter nine. Yeah. And I love this. Yeah. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, um, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice in the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the uh, plunder. Mm. That switch Mm. from, you know, absolute worst to 
hope, like they're seeing this hope. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing about light is light travels a long distance. Mm -hmm. When you think of the sun, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, mm -hmm. millions yeah. and millions of yeah. miles away, and yet its heat and light is mm -hmm. coming to mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The stars are so far away, it takes years for where mm -hmm. it's created for us to see. Mm -hmm. And hope works like that. Oftentimes mm -hmm. we're seeing it, it's still a long way out mm -hmm. yet, but we can see it there and hold on to it. Yeah, yeah. And and I love that, that Isaiah is pointing them to this restoration. And so, yeah. you know, again, they've been walking in darkness, but they're going to see a great light. They've been living in the land of deep darkness. Again, we sometimes I feel like we're living in a time of our history, and it's interesting the 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 hundreds of years pattern that we're talking about with Isaiah. Mm -hmm. um, but but we feel like we're in that deep darkness right now. But a light has dawned. The nation will be enlarged. Their joy will be increased, and they'll rejoice as a people who as we rejoice at the harvest. Well, when a harvest comes, we often have to wait for the harvest. And I think I guess mm. it's in the Advent piece of, of, this, of this passage of Isaiah, that Isaiah is promising, prophesying something that hasn't quite yet arrived. And that is the anticipation, the preparation that Advent encourages us to do over this December season leading up to the birth of Jesus, to be waiting, but to be waiting with faith. And if it isn't, if it isn't Christmas, it's January. It's not January, it's February. That's that resiliency that, okay, God's not done yet. God is bigger than our current circumstances. Mm -hmm. That would be a huge thing that, that, that we hope we take away from today. God is much bigger than our circumstances, always has been, was yeah. in Isaiah's time, and certainly is today as well. Yeah, absolutely. And even if the nation falls apart now, that is not the end of the story. Yeah. Yeah. That is... The, the story continues. God continues to work in us. He continues to work through history. And even when the world ends, there is a new world yeah, coming, yeah. which is going to restore everything to the way it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, that hope is hard when you're watching things fall apart. Yeah. But it's also important because if you don't have that hope, then there is nothing else to hold on to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then so Isaiah goes on in, in chapter 9 to really describe the the the, the coming of Jesus. And, and he mm. says in Isaiah 9, 6, uh, for to, unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I can never read these words without like singing it in my yeah, head, yeah, as, yeah. you know, the Messiah going on. <laughs> but what a powerful promise that in Jesus, that's what all it is to come with that. With that, mm -hmm. and and today, those those ideas are as important as us as it was back then. A new government, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, we we pray. We've been praying for those who make lead, leaders who make big decisions these days, mm -hmm. and and Jesus is is Lord of all of that. Is what this is offering us. Absolutely. The, the, I think sometimes when the Bible uses language of kings and yeah. kingdoms and stuff like that, it's hard for us to relate to because that's not the yeah. government we have, nor the government that we want yeah. <laughs> per se. But, but this idea behind it that, that God is in control. And even when we look at our governments today, even when the people I want to win win, there's often that sense of disappointment of, the things that I hoped would happen never seem to fully get there mm -hmm. or, or they get there and the next person comes along and, and yeah. changes it again. And if our hope is in, you know, these worldly yeah. things, they don't last. We have no security in them whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And it's hard because we want that illusion of control. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think particularly around Christmas time, this becomes really important to people is this illusion of control. Um, and so we do our Christmas and we want our Christmas to be perfect. Mm. I remember uh, back a couple years ago when I was first graduating from university and things were just changing in our family. We, my, you know, the, the, um, the house was different we weren't all home as long as we used to be over mm. the holidays. People were getting married and we were adjusting to new people coming into mm -hmm. the family. And in my head, I just wanted things to be like I remembered them being. Mm. And, it, and I would get upset over little details because it was like, if, if I can hold on to this, then maybe life mm. won't change anymore. And yet I had to let go and say, 
you know what? Christmas doesn't have to be perfect. I just need to enjoy what I, the family I do have and, and what we mm. have right now mm. because I'm not in control. And, and trying to stay in control becomes a game that drives you insane. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it destroys you. Um, and so if I have to admit that I'm not in control, but I will, I will do what I can and partner with God yeah. with what I have, it changes your attitude yeah. on things. Yeah. And suddenly I can let go of the things that I can't control. Yeah. So that I think takes us really well into where we want to end off today. And that is, what does this mean for us? Where is the mm. good news of God's hope that we want to lean into now like never before as we move towards Christmas, as we do our best to survive this, this pandemic and all that it's, it's meant, the reality of that? Mm. So let, let's talk a little bit about what is this passage and what is this idea of God's hope? How is that good news for us? What, is, what does that mean? I, I, think, I think one would be to remember God's faithfulness. That's a piece of this passage, that pattern that the Israelites had seen over and over and over again. Well, it goes back even further because it goes back to the Israelites being led to the promised land and finding freedom there. There's a pattern in history that's, that's God at work that's bigger than our current circumstance. So yes. to remember God's faithfulness. Where has God been faithful even through this pandemic? Where has God risen up and blessed your life in ways that, that you are, are surprised at looking back? We, I think we all have those yeah. experiences and stories. Maybe as we look towards Christmas, how might God's faithfulness rise up in the midst of Christmas? We might all be able to think back, I, I suspect, to a Christmas that wasn't what we hoped it would be. I know one of the most challenging Christmases that we ever had in our house ended up being one of the best that we ever had, to be honest, because God is and was faithful, and will be this year for us as well. Remember God's faithfulness. I think another thing in that is when we think about hope, sometimes hope is the like, oh, I hope it gets better, but mm-hmm. I don't really expect it to. Mm-hmm. Or hope is is almost like um, thoughts and prayers. Yeah. It's, it's the trite thing that we say without actually mm-hmm. dealing with what's going on in the reality of it. But hope for me is actually not something that, that allows me to be passive. Hope is what keeps me fighting for something better. Mm. So um, hope makes me believe that having another conversation with someone I disagree with and treating them in a loving, respectful way, instead of just screaming at them how I really feel like doing at this moment, that there's hope that when I reach out, I can change people. Mm. Um, And my career has been one of me being changed by people who who had enough hope to believe that conversations with me were productive mm. and me sharing my story with people and changing them because they heard it. Mm. And so just today I was I was in a conversation with my friend who we disagree with deeply politically mm. um and I wanted to just write him off but hope made me say having a conversation with here and treating him gently in it actually makes him more likely to come around. Mm. And so hope pushes me mm. out of my comfort spaces and forces me to do things. Hope says, uh, I'm going to scrape together more money for for caring and sharing this year, even though things are tight with, with some of the changes because of COVID mm. for us personally, because other people are in even more need than we are. Mm. And hope says, I can be trusted to do that, mm, mm. you know? Yeah, I, I love that idea that hope in some ways leads us to action because we're so inspired by hope and want to partner with God to help bring it about. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and so hope actually, the good news of God's hope coming this Christmas is that we are partners with God to help bring that out. We are in fact bearers of hope. We as Jesus followers today, we absolutely receive that hope, enter in, be filled with the Holy Spirit, but then we are actually bearers of that hope caring and sharing. Christmas Day Outreach has the potential to be the, the most powerful and, and, and needed Christmas Day Outreach that we've ever done before to bring hope. In fact, that is the gospel. If gospel means good news, that is the gospel, that God has come in Jesus. We're celebrating that again this year. But part of that story is that God lived here in Jesus, died, gave himself fully and freely for us out of sacrificial love, and then 
was was raised from the dead and gives us his spirit now so that we can live into these things, that Jesus' spirit is in us and we become bearers of hope. That's the good news of the gospel. And for some of us, we will receive more hope this year than ever before by being bearers of that hope to others, to our neighbors, um, through some of the things that will be happening around the church, but also in your own neighborhood as well. I think another piece about hope is um, when you look beyond just this life, because if our hope is just in what's happening yeah. now, then the type of turmoil that's described in Isaiah, sure, you know, hope is coming, but it'll be five, six generations from yeah. now, is cold comfort. But this is where our belief as Christians that what we see now is not all that there is, is so important. Mm. We have a hope, you know, mm. mm-hmm. when I was doing counseling, one of the techniques that they taught us to do was um, uh, examining catastrophes and asking what's the worst that could happen. Mm. So as things overturn <laughs> and go, what's the worst that happened? I could die. If I die, what happens? Mm. I go to heaven. Mm. Now, that doesn't absolve me of my responsibility of taking care of the earth now Mm -hmm. and caring Mm -hmm. for the people around me, but it says even if the worst does Mm -hmm. happen, I am not without hope, Mm -hmm. and so I can confidently move ahead with loving other people in this life because I know that there's something more than this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is the ultimate trust. Yeah. In, in, in God's hope. And, and I think the last passage from Isaiah that we, we want to share to conclude our, the message time today really, again, points us in, in that direction. In, in Isaiah chapter 65, at, sorry, at verse 17, beautiful imagery here that we're offered from Isaiah. Again, just as important for us today as it was for them then. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind but be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and to people and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that hope is... That, that's the end. <laughs> like mm-hmm. That's what we have to mm-hmm. hold on to, to look forward to. Mm-hmm. This is what we celebrate at Christmas. Christmas, Jesus showing up was the, the first glimpse. It was the mm-hmm. down payment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the, it was the proof mm-hmm. that the trust we've been putting is really there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jesus showing up is saying, see, I am here and real mm-hmm. and with you. Mm-hmm. And so even when you can't see me now, you know this is, you know mm-hmm. it's true. Mm-hmm. It's like the smell of your mom baking mm-hmm. cookies. I know your mom bakes good cookies. <laughs> I like that smell. But when you, yeah. you yeah. get that first yeah. smell and you can't eat them yet because mm-hmm. they're still cooking. <laughs> of course, I was always one to like sneak the dough because I like the raw <laughs> dough. <laughs> but that smell just reminds mm-hmm. you that it's coming. Mm-hmm. And Christmas is our time of celebrating that Jesus has come Mm. and he's coming again. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let's pray for the Holy Spirit to come Mm. today and in the weeks ahead as we move into this Christmas season. Just invite us to open ourselves up today to the receiving and the moving of that Holy Spirit that is underneath all that we've talked about today, these promises of hope of God's coming. (laughs) Loving and gracious, God, we we thank you for your promises that even in the midst of the pain that is so real in our world today, just the as they were in Isaiah's time, that you have given us promises that we can hold on to, that in the here and now we will continue to get a glimpse of something much greater than our circumstances, and they point to a new day, a new heaven, and a new earth. And so we pray, come Holy Spirit, come. Bring your healing to those who are struggling and wrestling these days. Bring your new life, that promise of of newness, that, that sense of hope of what is still to come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. As we move into this Christmas season, with all that it will bring, 
May you fill us with excitement for your arrival, that you would birth again in us your great love, your love that transforms and renews us and this planet. So thank you for your presence and for your promises today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, just as we uh, close today, I want to offer the going deeper questions for our Zoom church, for our small groups, or maybe just even for your family or for your own journaling uh, on your own as well. Uh, number one, how are you feeling as Christmas uh, December comes this year? Number two, where are you hoping good news might come through this Christmas season? Number three, in what ways does Jesus and his coming bring hope to you and to others? And finally, how will you be part of bringing hope this Christmas season? God bless you, everyone. Thanks so much for being together today. Let us worship God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And in all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay in my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my Of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire, and in darkest nights, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived. In the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after it's running after me Your goodness is running after it's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now to give you everything And your goodness is running after it's running It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now To give you everything And your goodness is running after It's running after me And all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God In all my life you have
of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, how wonderful it is to be reminded uh, of how good and how great that you are. Mm. Thank you. In your name, amen. Amen. Now we're going to head over to Matt, who's going to tell us about the first Advent podcast. Exciting times. Hey, everyone. Matt here. We're all really excited about the Advent series of the Good News Podcast, and we hope that you are too. This podcast is different from the Reimagined series because we're trying to connect the Advent themes of love, joy, hope, and peace to all aspects of our community. To do this, we're bringing in community members from all over Brampton and beyond. So check it out every Sunday to see how each week's message is lived out in our community. Thanks, Matt. So check out the first Advent podcast that will be up total, uh, today after the service or check it out later on in the week if you want to. But we're so glad that you joined us today and want to encourage you to come back next week where we're he- going to hear about the good news of peace. Mm. Who needs more peace in their lives? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and mm. speaking of that, um, I hope and pray that each one of you um, is blessed this week. Always be on the lookout and continue to share hope. And may the Lord watch out for you and keep you while we are absent one from another. Take care, everybody. Have a great week. Bye.